welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. A number of political parties and civil society organisations have launched legal applications to have the 18.65% ESCOM tariff increase set aside or suspended. In addition, President Sora Ramaphosa has asked the ESCOM board to see if the hikes can be postponed. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the implications. Hi Terence. Oh, Firstly, was the President's call a surprise given his focus on solving the electricity crisis? I think yes and no. <coughs> yes, it was a surprise because one, it's an illegal call. Now, once the re regulator makes a decision, you can only really take this on review legally. You can't uh, use moral suasion to say the utility mustn't implement the hike. That is, it's been through a process, it's well documented process, it's got public hearings and the outcome uh, must be implemented unless it's reviewed and set aside. So. I think also yes, because you know he th he didn't go to Davos this year and focused on the electricity crisis, and they were locked in talks and in rooms with Eskom, and they know the plight of Eskom financially. He knows the plight going back many many years, and he also knows that part of that plight is because of the lack of cost reflective tariffs. There's no way he doesn't know that. So I think uh, Eskom would have made it clear during those discussions what sort of resources they need to get themselves out of this deep quagmire. No, because we're entering election, uh, election phase. We know load shedding is a big risk to the African National Congress and these tariff hikes add to that risk. So I think, um, yes, it was a surprise given what the President knows, but no, given the context that we're in of a very sort of, we're going into a very heightened political season in South Africa and the electricity crisis, the prices and the load shedding are going to be front and centre. It's a real gift for the opposition, the, uh, both those, uh, those um, elements, the prices as well as the load shedding and uh, I suppose trying to play and put by buffers up, you would expect the incumbents to want to do that. Various political parties and civil society organisations have taken a legal route instead. Yes, and that, as I mentioned earlier, is the correct route. So we've seen the DA's application to have the tariff set aside. We see a, a number of other political parties and civil society groups in Carter Freedom Party, the United Democratic Movement, Action SA, NUMSA as part of a different application. Also, they want to have a load shedding stopped, especially for schools, hospitals, etc. But they also want the tariff hike that's been approved by NERSA suspended. So this will go in front of the court, uh, and we don't know what form it will take, whether there will be separate cases, but I imagine they'll want to consolidate these into one sort of set of hearings. Uh, both of them are saying it's urgent. So we can see that, it, as I mentioned earlier, this is a, a massive gift for opposition parties in this heightened political environment, or as we're moving into election uh, season. And uh, this is another way to raise this issue for society. We are trying to do something. We're trying to stop the price hikes. Looking at the documents, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how the courts handle it because they're asking for many, there's different, many different strands to it. But definitely on the tariff, uh, the both are quite clear. Don't implement anything on April 1. And the courts are going to have to decide now legally what that means, you know, nurse has gone through this, this process, intensive process. We did have public hearings last year. A lot of the increase of the 18.65 was baked in from decisions that were made that were incorrect by NERSA previously and that courts have intervened and therefore nurses had to allow those clawbacks already in. Plus nurses look quite carefully at the, the so-called efficient costs of ESKIM. So, there's no, theoretically, there's no corruption or misappropriation or overspending in efficient costs. So this is what NERSA has reluctantly granted Eskom after looking at its efficient costs. And we must also understand that Eskom asked for quite a bit more for this financial year. And part of that quite a bit more was to operate its open cycle gas turbines at 12% load factor. And we know they've been doing more like 17% this year and we haven't been able to keep the lights on. But it has lowered 
the intensity of what otherwise would have been much higher levels of load shedding. And we know there's this diesel funding plan in the mix coming out of NECOM. We don't know the details yet. But they've actually disallowed that for next year. And that's they've, they've granted 8.5 billion rand against Eskom's request for, for, for double that um, into uh, the, the, the from April 1 to March 31 next year. So th there's going to be a lot of focus on the courts. But ten the courts have tended to err on the side of the methodology on the law. Well, that's, the, that's what they have to do. And generally, they've come down on the side of when Mercer hasn't applied the methodology on the side of Eskom. And in this case, you know, they, it seems there's an agreement that they have applied the methodology, especially from the, the two incumbents, which are a nurse and um, Eskom, which you'd expect to say that, although Eskom hasn't said that for a number of years. Um, it's going to be, I think, difficult for them to say, look, there's not going to be any increase. What is Eskom saying about the tariff increase and how that fits into its recovery plans? Well, Eskom, as I said, hasn't rejected, as it did previously, nurses' decisions where it took those on immediately indicated was likely to take it on legal review. Obviously, they have to wait for the record, uh, yeah, the reasons for a decision, which haven't been published yet. But they don't look like they're going to be taking it on legal review. They thanked NERSA publicly for the div difficult balancing act that they had to, to sort of navigate when making this decision. So they've just reiterated that, look, this is a legal, uh, there's legislation that governs this. There's regulations that govern this. There's a methodology that we've applied here. There's a public hearing process that we've applied. So we think that all those legal boxes um, and regulatory boxes have been ticked. And we also, they're saying it's part of this transition to cost reflectivity, which we know that that's been their mantra over many years. And actually, the energy pricing policy does say that we should have cost reflective tariffs and migrate there. And we're not quite there, but I think these latest rounds of um, uh, 18 and 12 percent type hikes consecutively will take Eskom into a much healthier position. And then they said, well, this is what they need, uh, clearly, to cover their efficient costs. And those costs don't go away just because a president has said halt uh, an increase or the courts have stopped you from increasing. So if it's not going to come from uh, the consumer, then it's going to have to come from elsewhere. What are the implications should the tariff hike not be implemented on April 1? Basically, it's if it's not going to come from the consumer, which is through the tariff hike, people paying more and then also revenue being collected, which is now a massive risk because we know that the municipal debt to Eskom is standing at nearly 60 billion rand and that's a, a real problem. But if it's not going to come from the consumer using the electricity um, and probably uh, with the price signals, probably using electricity much more sparingly, uh, then it's going to have to come from another source and there's really only two other sources. One is more debt, and we know that because Eskom debt is officially unsustainable, and we know that because there's a process underway, uh, well, Eskom isn't, isn't really able to uh, pay it. Every year we're getting regular transfers. Without those regular transfers from the taxpayer, they aren't a going concern, and they aren't able to, to honour their, their debt commitments. So they've reached the point of unsustainability on their debt, and we probably will hear in February some sort of plan of taking between one and two thirds of their debt off the Eskom balance sheet and transferring it onto the national accounts. But so, there's, so I think the debt uh, component is limited in terms of raising more debt to cover the gap should we not get the tariff hikes. The alternative is again to revert to the taxpayer and that's quite a thing because the taxpayers are really between 20 and 30 billion rand a year over the last few years has been transferred from the taxpayer through the National Treasury to Eskom to keep it, as I said, as a going concern. Without that, it wasn't. So can we lean more heavily on the taxpayer? I also have my doubts in this climate that you can raise taxes. And, you know, I think corporate and individual taxes are almost at that limit of breaking point without real pushback from those, from individuals who are paying. And we know it's a very narrow base um, who are paying a lot, of, uh, a lot of our tax. And corporates too, you know, their competitiveness. So there's going to be a lot of pushback. 
So then you have to look at a regressive tax like that and how many percentage points you would need to get to cover the sort of billions that you're going to forego in a tariff. That's a major conundrum. So I think we're in a very interesting position. I think it's good that the p uh, political parties have taken it to court and that this is properly adjudicated rather than trying to put pressure on, political pressure on Eskom to not implement something that's been uh, decided in a legal way uh, using the regulatory methodologies that, have, that are defined through that, uh, that legislation. But I don't know what the outcome is going to be. But uh, s in the end, these costs don't disappear just because, <laughs> you know, j just because you want them to. They don't. They're going to have to be covered. And there's really only those three buckets. That's either the consumer, uh, the bond markets, or the bondholders are giving more, or the taxpayer. Thank you. That's the second tax show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily email newsletter.